Hey there, horn peeps. Uh, I promised in a previous video or in the comments to a previous video that I would record my new Lewis Dirk LDX5 once it came in. Uh, it hasn't yet come in, but I figured since I'm going to be setting up a bunch of recording gear, there have been a lot of questions I've seen posted on various forums, notably on like horn people on Facebook and a few other forums dating back to even MySpace forums about how to properly record horns. Uh, now, I've done recording now since the mid-early 90s, um, and I've messed up as many times as I've been successful, so I can share some of the things that I've learned along the way about how to record a horn. It's a pretty challenging instrument to record overall, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through a couple different techniques. Uh, I'm going to show a single mic technique, actually a couple single mic techniques. I'm going to show some multi-mic techniques, um, and then kind of discuss the pros and cons uh, about those techniques and even show them in a couple different spaces. So for right now, pan the camera around. This is a relatively wide open space. Pardon the messy living area here, but this is where I live. And sometimes when I'm wanting to get the bigger sound or when I'm wanting to get a, a more uh, open sound in the practice sessions, I will come down here to practice. Also, uh, I will throw on the uh, Berlin Philharmonic Digital Concert Hall on the stereo system behind me and crank it up uh, and play along. So particularly if I'm working on a part for something, uh, you know, if I'm preparing to go for uh, an audition or if I'm preparing to go for you know, a gig uh, and it's music that uh, they've performed, I can put the part here, play along with the orchestra and, and I can have fun with that. So this is a space that I think a lot of people are kind of used to. It's a medium-sized space. It gives you a little bit of time and space for your sound to develop, but it's not like a concert hall. Uh, and most of the folks that are going to be recording, they're looking for good sound quality, but maybe not, you know, commercial release sound quality. So we'll start here. I'll do a single mic technique first. I will have subsequent videos where I do multi-mic techniques in a space like this. Um, I'll go single mic, then I'll go uh, single mic with some omnis, and then I'll do like a crazy multi-mic setup. And then I'll also do a recording up in my office, which is a 10 foot by 11 foot bedroom, which a lot of you probably also practice in. Um, I also practice in that space and recording in a space like that presents its own challenges. So we will explore all of those things, talk about the different ways of miking, what to do, what not to do, maybe some equipment choices and things like that. So let's get right to it. I'll start recording. So first let's talk a little bit about the equipment choice for recording yourself. Uh, there are a number of USB microphones, uh, you know, uh, that you can connect directly to a camera or to your phone even, uh, Bluetooth microphones and things of that nature. I will tell you one of the challenges of going that route is that in many cases, you don't really have the control over the input gain of those microphones. And what that means is that if there's a really loud source, it's gonna do two, one of two things. It's either going to clip, which is gonna sound really gross, or it's gonna automatically adjust the gain, uh, which basically means that any dynamics that you've put into it are erased. So if you use those mics, just bear in mind that may be a side function of that. But there's a number of companies out there nowadays that are making mics that will do that very thing. The mics that I'll be using today are both cardioid microphones. This is an old bargain bin mic, uh, but it's kind of a, a rare unicorn. This is a, an Octava mic, if you can find it. I bought mine for $29. They're now worth hundreds and hundreds of dollars, which is, is silly to me. I, I could literally drive nails into wood with this and probably have, um, but really just a good old fashioned cardioid pencil mic. And, and specifically, I'm gonna say pencil mic. Uh, I see a lot of people using big microphones. Uh, if, you've, if you're a tech spec weenie, I will tell you like the AKG C414. It's a mic I see commonly used. It is absolutely the wrong mic to use for horn recording. Um, Number one, large diaphragm microphones generally do not handle the same level of SPL or sound pressure levels that a small diaphragm mic will. That's a generalization, but it is true in most cases. The biggest thing is what's called the off axis response. So a microphone is gonna always work best when it's pointed directly at its source. However, uh, a good microphone is also gonna sound good off axis, which means that if the source is over here and the microphone is aimed slightly away from it, it's going to do a good job picking that up. Again, a generalization, the smaller the diaphragm, the microphone, the smaller the part that picks everything up, the better it handles off axis response. So you'll see I've got some really small diaphragm microphones. 
they have an amazing off-axis response, which means that anything that's coming at it from the side sounds natural and sounds lovely. Large diaphragm mics, generally speaking, and I think there's only a few exceptions to this, and I promise you, if you're watching this video, you're not buying that exception. We're talking five to $10,000 microphones per, per microphone. Um, if you're looking at a few hundred dollars, you should not get a small diaf a large diaphragm microphone. They will not sound good off axis. And what that means is any of that reflected sound in the room is not going to sound good. And it's going to make you sound bad. It's going to work against you. So a small diaphragm, oftentimes called a pencil microphone, typically anything with a half inch diameter for the uh, diaphragm is best. This is an Octava, if you can find it. They're great little mics. They sound fantastic on brass instruments. This is an Austrian audio microphone. Uh, this is patterned off of some of the older AKG microphones that are kind of rare unicorns nowadays, but in many respects, I think it, it sounds better. I think these are fantastic mics. This is a pricier microphone. So bear in mind, if you're not willing to spend four, five, six hundred dollars for a microphone, this is out of your range, but that's okay. The, the difference between this, you know, five, six hundred dollar microphone, and maybe be more, and this twenty-nine dollar microphone is pretty negligible. It's not a huge difference. So don't hesitate to get a lesser expensive microphone. You may make some compromises, but you're not going to kill your sound. Today I'm running through, uh, and generally for all of these recordings, I'll be running through this SSL box, uh, audio interface that'll interface into my computer, which goes over USB-C. Uh, very straightforward, very, very simple. Um, I, I've used much higher end recording equipment than this. This is an inexpensive box in the grand scheme of things. They make them smaller, which makes them way less expensive. Uh, this is, I wouldn't call this cheap, but I, it's, Really, really good. Um, you can buy a lot of different types of audio interfaces, and I will tell you, uh, a fifty-dollar audio interface and a thousand-dollar audio interface, the difference is negligible. Unless you're making a living recording people, there's no need to go with a super high-end audio interface. An inexpensive one is great. Uh, Zoom recorders, especially those that have external microphone inputs, are fantastic for it. And in in fact, a good Zoom recorder that has microphones built in can also be used to really good effect for personal recording. So. This will be my uh, audio interface that'll take my microphones and convert it into something that my computer can use. And then in my computer, I'm using a program called Samplitude. Pretty much any computer program that records in digital audio, uncompressed, is gonna sound the same. There's no difference in sound quality in the program. It's just a matter of preference. So use whichever one you want. If you wanna find a free one, go for it. If you wanna find a cheap interface and a cheap microphone, go for it. You're not gonna really hurt yourself too much. In this last example, uh, the microphone that I used, first of all, it's one microphone, so it's picking up in mono, which is quite okay. Uh, and the microphone is about four feet, four and a half feet that way, uh, and pointed at my bell. Now, it's not perfectly pointed at the bell, but again, small diaphragm condensers or pencil mics do a better job picking up off axis. So what we're gonna get is if there's good room sound, which this room sounds pretty okay, uh, then you're going to actually pick up a good mix of that direct sound and a good mix of that kind of reverb, reverb sound. Uh, and since the horn is a single point source instrument, there's no harm in recording it in mono and then slapping on a little bit of reverb in post-production. Um, getting a little bit more direct sound, which is what we're getting with a directional mic versus an omnidirectional microphone, is going to help you by, uh, again, providing that point source location and then when you mix in the reverb, what I would strongly advise is if you are gonna use a reverb plugin, a lot of them are really kind of nasty for classical music, uh, be very judicious with it. And I'll give an example uh, here where I've done that exact same thing. So uh, hang tight for that.
Okay, this is a similar setup to what I had with the mic in front of me, a little bit off the ground, about head level off the ground for an average sized person. This time though, the microphone is behind me, so it's aiming more downwards at the direct output of my bell. I'm only gonna do one excerpt with, with like this. It's not my preferred style of uh, recording horn. It's a great means for supplementing a different style of recording, but I don't think it's the best sound here, and I think you'll hear what I mean when I say this. The final technique I will use for close miking of a horn or just miking a horn in general is the rear mounted close mic. Now, I've seen in some situations where people literally shove the mic up the bell. I'm not gonna demonstrate that. We all know it's not gonna sound good. Imagine sticking your head in the horn bell. It's just not gonna sound good. So I'm not gonna demonstrate that. Instead, what I'm gonna demonstrate is the close miking technique. This does have its place. Uh, and in fact, in later videos, when I get into more advanced miking techniques, you'll see what that place may be. But it is my least favorite. We'll see why. It, to me, it just shows off all the upper overtones. It doesn't have any of the roundness effect that we get from filling up a room. So close mic, uh, it's within arm's reach. It could be closer and we don't wanna do that. Uh, we'll give it a shot. I will uh, share with you my horn player excuse because we always have to have a quiver of excuses as to why we don't sound quite right. And that is, I'm literally using a brand new rim today um, huge shout out to uh, Dave Hauser getting this out to me really quickly. This is a, a brand new rim to me. I'm used, I've been playing on uh, an old Vienna one rim, which is a super thin, very wide open. It's a little over 18 millimeters in diameter. This one's also an 18 millimeter diameter, but it's a thicker rim. It's their E series. I really like it, but it's dramatically different. So I'm not quite locking in on my articulations and you'll notice that there's a little fuzziness uh, at the beginning of a lot of articulations. So that's not the mic, that's not the room, that's my face. So just humor that. Maybe I should have chosen a different day to try a different rim than when I'm recording. Whatever. <clears throat> Okay, we've now ventured up into my small office space here. <clears throat> and again, it is about 10 by 11 feet. Now, small spaces present their own kinds of challenges. First of all, I've got a lot of stuff in here. It's gonna absorb the sound, it's gonna reflect the sound, it's gonna do all sorts of weird things to the sound. Uh, and that's kind of normal. Uh, so you might get vibrations you're not expecting. So you know, chase that kind of stuff down and figure it out. Uh, the other thing that you need to be really careful of in a small room like this is a, phenomenon called standing waves. Uh, and basically what it is, is when a wave goes out and hits a reflective surface and comes back, if, if the waveform coming back is opposite of the waveform heading out, then you're gonna actually have sound cancellation. If it is the same as it, you're gonna have this weird sound reinforcement. So if you place the microphones poorly and you place yourself poorly, then you may find that some notes sound strangely quiet and other notes sound strangely loud when you aren't playing them that way and you don't want that. So the single biggest way you can avoid uh, standing waves, this isn't gonna get rid of them altogether, but it is gonna help, is in a room this size, make sure that you're not putting anything at the halfway point. In other words, don't place the microphone halfway between one wall and the other. Don't place it halfway between the floor and the ceiling. Thirds are generally good, a third of the way in, roughly, a third of the way up, two thirds of the way in, two thirds of the way up, whatever. Same thing with yourself. If you placed yourself smack dab in the middle of the room, you're going to have standing waves galore. So much like photography, if you're a photography kind of person, there's the rule of thirds. And there's the same thing in audio recording too. Rules of thirds, rules of fifths generally help. So place the microphone about a third of the way into the room, place yourself at about a third of the way into the room. That helps to avoid any of those weird acoustical phenomenons. 
they do still happen. So uh, you may have to play around with mic placement <clears throat> or body placement. So we'll do this in this space, slightly different excerpt this time, um, and we'll see how this sounds. This particular case, I don't think there's a whole lot of flexibility in a room this size. You need to be placed about a third of the way into the room. The microphone needs to be placed in the opposite third of the room, about eye level and aim down. If you're standing up to play and record, similar placement, maybe go a notch higher on the microphone if you can and aim it down again towards the bell. You don't wanna, the, the direction, if you're using a good mic, is not super critical, but it is gonna make a difference. So play with it and see what you like. So thanks for kind of joining me on this microphone journey. Um, I, I think some of the big takeaways here are there's no necessarily right or wrong answer. I think uh, there are some things in my opinion that work better than others, but just like a lot of things with regards to the horn music is it's very subjective and personal taste oriented. So if you like a much more direct sound with a lot of those higher overtones in there, then putting the microphone directly high, behind the bell may not be a bad choice for you. Uh, you can always change things in post-production if you want to. I'm not a huge fan of that other than maybe adding a touch of reverb, but it can be done. Uh, if you like maybe more of that distant sound, maybe a little bit fuller room sound, then getting the mic away from you is also a good choice. Uh, again, when you're filming or recording in a space like this, you're limited as to what you can do. There's not a whole lot of choices when you're in a 10 foot by 11 foot space. You just kind of have to roll with it. Uh, and you can still get good sounds out of it. It's just maybe you have to play around a little bit more with mic placement and then definitely a little bit with some reverb in post. Um, a, a little bit goes a long way. So that's kind of my take on single mic recording. If you want to get involved in single microphone recording, you can get uh, introduced to it pretty inexpensively. You can use some basic you know, uh, USB microphones for 50 bucks or so. You can get a little bit crazy if you want to and get an audio interface and, and a nice microphone. And you can be out anywhere between a couple hundred bucks to several thousand dollars for that. And then if you really want to get into high quality recording, uh, you're, you're probably going to start spending a lot more money on that. But uh, the skills are useful and you can use them for recording your ensembles and sharing those things with friends and family as well. So I hope this helps a little bit. We will come back, I, I will come back and do uh, some different recording techniques with multi-microphone recording techniques. Um, and I will use some of the Omni mics for that. I will use the directional mics for that and um, see how we can get some dramatically different sounds. And if possible, maybe I'll try to also capture some uh, small ensembles as well, because I think a lot of you are in like horn quartets, brass quintets. Those would be great for um, those kind of uh, different ensemble sounds and understanding what equipment you can use for that purpose and how to get a good sound out of it. So, you know, if you have any questions at all about the, what I've done here, uh, don't hesitate to put questions down in the comments. Uh, I will try to get back to them uh, as quickly as possible. If this is posted on one of the Facebook sites and you want to put questions there, that's cool. I will say putting it on the YouTube actually helps a little bit better. So put the comments on YouTube if at all possible, and I will do my best to get back in touch with you that way. Um, thanks for spending this time with me. Cheers.